intimately. The second is this. God wants you to know Him intimately. Not only does God know us intimately, He wants us to know Him in the same way. Now, there are a lot of fans walking around who know about God. They know about Jesus. They know all the right things to say. They've got great head knowledge of this relationship. But they never get past that. That's the extent of the relationship that they have. And you see, it's one thing to know about God, to know about His Son, Jesus, but it's quite another thing to know Him intimately, to know Him in our hearts. It's been said one of the longest journeys we could ever take is to go from our head to our hearts. And when we're talking about an intimate relationship with God through Christ, we're talking about allowing that information that we have in our heads to travel from to our hearts where we know Him in an intimate and deep way. Time and again, the Scriptures speak to us about what it means to know who God is. In Psalm 910, the psalmist proclaims, Those who know your name will trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. David proclaims in Psalm 27, One thing have I ask of the Lord, and this is what I seek. This is what I seek. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek Him in His temple. And we could look time and time and time again at those who were true followers of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. They sought with everything they had to be in that deep, intimate relationship with Him. In Psalm 46.10, we hear these words, Be still, be still, and know that I am God. In essence, come into my presence. Be quiet and let us commune. So why is it that even though God invites us to know Him intimately, that we so often want to keep Him at arm's length? Is it maybe because we're afraid of being vulnerable with God? Now we go back to the first point. God knows all about us. God knows all about us. If we look at the woman in our scripture reading for this morning, we find again that she is a sinner. She's a woman of ill repute. She knew all about her sin, and trust me, at this point when she's with Jesus, she is not proud of what she has done. She knew that by the standards of her day that she was not worthy to even be in Jesus' presence, let alone touching Him. But she also knew who He was. And she did not allow her fear of vulnerability to overcome her desire to be with Jesus, her Lord. There are many people who feel and believe that they're far too gone. They believe they're far too gone in their sin to ever be in an intimate relationship with Jesus. But we have to remember the words of Paul. The words he wrote to the Romans and the words he writes to us. We have all sinned. We have all sinned. And we all fall short of God's glory. Your sin is no worse than mine and my sin is no worse than yours. We all, we all stand in the need of God's grace. To know God intimately is to be open and honest about ourselves. To be open to owning up our shortcomings. To also be open to His love and to His grace. That's what we find happening here with this woman in Simon's house. And that's what God wants us to be about as well. As I thought about these Things, the words of Jesus kept popping into my head where in Matthew 11, 
Jesus says, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. And as we come to Him and give Him our burdens, give to Him our sin, allow His grace to just overflow us, we can find that release. We need to be careful because far too often we miss all that God offers to us because we fear this 